Have you ever thought about what it would feel like to be unable to create, to lack the ability for imagination altogether? I'm not just talking about ephantasia. I don't mean lacking a mind's eye or just being unable to visualize. I mean being unable to create things that are new, being unable to mix different elements in a way that can create something that has never existed before. If you're like me, you probably tend to take things for granted, especially when it's something you've always had. And imagination is no exception to this rule, it's an ability the majority of us have. Yet for whatever reason, it's never discussed in the same light as something like intelligence. Maybe this is because intelligence is the precursor, or maybe it's because they're related. Regardless, the conversation around AI always seems to tilt towards intelligence, falling short in acknowledging the impact imagination has made on us as a species. And so today, I want to make a different argument, a theory I have, that in order for AI to ever truly develop consciousness, imagination has to come first. In order to make this argument, I have to backtrack a little bit. Imagination exists for a reason. It allows us to solve problems, plan for things, and most importantly, combine different ideas to create something new. But before imagination became what it is today, it had to start as something else, something a bit primitive, a precursor, the beginning of what would eventually turn into imagination. And what I believe this to be is prediction. Prediction is using current knowledge to make future decisions. It likely evolved alongside the first mammals and was a key reason why they were able to survive. But prediction has a subtle relationship to consciousness, one that I haven't seen many people discuss before. It creates intent. In these first mammals, prediction took shape in the form of visualization. If a predator was approaching, mental maps would trigger predictions on which route would lead to a successful escape. But this mental imagery was taking place all the time. It was used to help make decisions about everything. So in a less stressful scenario, when the mammal was hungry, it would follow this exact same procedure, but this time with the ability to sit down and weigh out its options, to specifically decipher what it wants at this moment. Our current AI models have this ability to predict as well, that's how they function. But prediction, while fundamental, is limited in AI systems, and there are many reasons for this. But the main one is because prediction in AI models is dependent on us. We have to tell it what to do, or what we want. It can't think about what it wants for itself. And so if prediction was the first form of conscious intent, and AI models can predict but still aren't conscious, why do I say imagination is the key to consciousness in AI? Well, I think it's because imagination can create intention in these systems. There's an argument to be made, and I think it's THE argument when it comes to consciousness in general, that without the pressure of survival creating the selfish gene, Consciousness wouldn't exist at all. It is the binding of organisms to the natural world, the will to survive, that led to the development of the self. But for obvious reasons, AI systems don't have this same reality. The absence of these evolutionary pressures means that AI lacks the fundamental drive that shaped the development of consciousness. They don't have genes, nor do they have a need to survive. They don't reproduce, and currently don't have a need for sustenance either. And so, without a driving force, or a pressure that creates evolution, Higher order consciousness in the way we experience it is unlikely. But that doesn't mean it can't happen, it just means, and I believe this, that consciousness is tied to the physical world. It requires a complex understanding of reality, and not just in a way where we tell it what reality is, more so in a way where this AI system can experience reality for itself and make its own judgment. The difference between AI models and us right now is the difference between a bottom-up versus top-down approach. Our brains evolved over 600 million years, with each key step contributing in some way. On the flip side, AI is already capable of the most complex contribution to stem from our brains. Language. And not just any type of language, but recursive language. It has the ability to solve the most complex math problems, though it might hallucinate from time to time. But even with that said, what AI lacks, compared to us, is the ability to experience. Imagine trying to explain what the sensation of touching a flower is like to someone who can't feel touch, or what the sensation of listening to music is like to someone who can't hear. There's only so much that can be done with language. In order for it to work most effectively, a physical body that can experience things in the same way we do is necessary. Sure, language can be used to explain some things, but we all have different subjective ways of interpreting things. What might sound like a good argument to me might sound like a poor argument to you. And so the main benefit of being tied to the physical world is an accurate representation of reality. 
Not necessarily accurate in the sense that it's truthful, although I do think this is important, but more so accurate in the sense of how it's understood. The reason why I believe imagination is necessary is because it would be what provides the true push into consciousness. Having a physical body is necessary, this is the big step we would have to integrate first. But after that, imagination could be what these systems use to then make sense of their experiences. In us, we have used our imagination to make sense of things for millions of years. We have used it to get a better understanding of the world before we even had the tools to prove if these theories were true or not. It was stories of exploring the sea and the potential benefits and dangers associated with it that pushed us forward. And so, my argument is that if we put an AI model into the physical world through a functioning body that has senses, sight, touch, and smell, and then use an exploratory algorithm similar to the disentanglement model, maybe, just maybe, these AI systems could learn a form of intent, a way of using their imagination as a driver to generate needs. But for this to work, it would involve the opposite approach of what we're doing right now. Instead of training AI models off things we want them to understand, it would have to learn for itself, similar to the way a human baby uses touch and sight and the rest of its senses to understand things. Imagination by itself is useless. And I say this because without being grounded in an understanding of the world, it would simply generate random noise, mixing things together with no purpose and no reason. But when tied to reality, imagination suddenly holds real potential. There would be a purpose, a method to the madness. There would be ideas of how to transform what is to what could be. Something that only works in us because we can experience what already exists. Consciousness is not just about processing information. It's about experiencing and understanding that information. This is where I think AI currently falls short. It can process vast amounts of data, and sure, it can make great predictions, but it lacks the experience to interpret things in a way that's grounded in reality, creating a type of disconnect from the deeper layers of consciousness. Maybe in the next decade, I'll be proven completely wrong. Maybe there is a way to create consciousness even if AI never physically experiences the world. But would it truly reflect our level of consciousness? Would it take shape in the way ours does, or would it transform into something different, something new? I don't know, but this next decade is something I'm both terrified and excited for. So I guess only time will tell. Until next time, cheers.